welcome to the Overwhelm is Optional podcast, where we cut through the fog of overwhelm so you can see all the ways to start creating a life that works for you. Hello, how are you doing? So nice to hang out with you again. Um, I'm recording this on Inbox. I'm recording it very close the day before it's released. And in bulk, what's in bulk? I feel funny saying that because I've never celebrated in bulk before. I've been aware of it for a while in my search to find structures that support my mind in listening to my body throughout the year because I've noticed, I've always been deeply aware of the seasons um, being somebody who grew up in the countryside, but I've noticed increasingly that the more I go with how my body feels and, and the, my energy during the changing seasons, the better. So I'm really excited today, like really, really excited. And this is why. So in bulk is a old, I believe an old Celtic festival. I don't know masses about it. I don't feel like I need to. It, it seems to be expressing something um, deep within me, which is really interesting for me. See if this resonates with you. So um, I think it was two weeks ago in my episode was about how I, you know, I was feeling like my energy ought to be better. My um, January should, I should be getting more done. There was a lot of shoulds and oughts and, and how I was able to let that go. And so what I did during January is my winter retreat went on for, oh God, more than twice as long as I was expecting. It was really, really interesting. And I know I'm not the only one doing this kind of work who had a similar experience. And then what happened is, so to start with, I struggled with that because I really wanted to get a lot of things done. Um, And instead, I went with that need to go inwards. And I did a lot of really nourishing practices and learning and courses. and, And I really, really needed that time. But it's I always find it difficult because my mind wants me to do the opposite. So my body and my heart are pulling me one way and my mind's pulling me the opposite because I am I have big dreams and there's a lot I want to achieve this year. And at, at any point, I always seem to have big dreams and want to achieve, achieve a lot. So maybe you resonate with that, that pull where the mind wants to go one way and the heart and the body wants to go another way. And in January, I had this huge heaviness of my body just wanting to sink deep into rest and in the end I stopped struggling as I described in the episode and I went with it and what's been really curious and and also hilarious because I know this to be true it's like I have to keep learning the same thing over and over again which is true we do have to learn the same things over and over again but each time we go back into that learning we pull out more so it's always worth doing and it's going to happen anyway right because Life keeps repeating stuff until we listen, until we pay attention. So I've noticed this that several times in my life that if I go with the rest, so this this can I'm I'm pretty good at doing it, I believe, on a day to day basis when it's a small rest. Yeah. So you, you reach that point where you're like, Oh my god, I'm really tired, what happened? And usually it's because I've not eaten enough lunch or I haven't I've got too excited about doing something and I've I've just I've just got too excited usually (laughs) and then if I lay on the floor or I sit down and just close my eyes and I'm still for quite a short amount of time and I go with that need to rest rather than pushing it very quickly I find this oh that's it now I'm bored of doing this whereas when I'm going into it I still notice the um this wall goes up of oh no 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 you can't do that you've got lots to do so the nagging's still there which is interesting and and that's okay because I'm noticing it but I do know that when I go with the need to rest it always works my body knows best but what's interesting about this winter and this much deeper rest is it's it's bigger stakes right you know I run my own business taking six weeks off and I didn't take a whole six weeks off I've still been working with clients but that energizes me hugely um and I've still been doing you know st- still complete commitment to you guys listening to my podcast thank you so much for being here but I haven't been doing the big strategic things that require enormous amount of of more rational brain power 
the the big structural learning stuff in my business. I haven't been doing that. I let it go because my mind actually really needed to not do it. And once I calmed my mind down into the, well, you teach listening to the body, therefore, not going to listen to my mind on this one. So once I, but I did have to kind of soothe and go with it. It'll all be okay. You have all the time in the world and really cultivating feelings of safety. Because in order to rest deeply, we need to feel safe, don't we? We can't, it's very hard to rest when we're still in that run, 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 push, push, push. So I had to pull, really let go of that and deliberately practice it. And I had a lot of self-doubt came up. I had a lot of stuff. It's great because I've released it now because I've had to face it in order to rest. I just, I recognize it. I I see you self-doubt. I see you. I call you out. Everything's going to be okay. I am safe. I am loved. January is the time for rest. So yeah, that's what I've been up to. Deep, deep rest. I've been doing some really good courses. And then I obviously ended up with too many courses because that's the kind of person I am. Maybe you can relate to that where there's so many opportunities like, yeah, I really ought to do this, this and this. And then what I did is I wrote them all out. And then after a bit, I was like, well, that one's really nourishing me. And that one's just not resonating at the moment. And it's okay to let it go. And I don't know about you, but that that positive letting go, that positive incompletion of something, that's taken me quite a long time to learn. Not just that it's okay, but it's essential to make space for what really nourishes me. And often I feel or have felt in the past very, well, I can still get into this state easily because I get so excited about life and all the opportunities. There's so many things, there's so many possibilities, there are limitless opportunities. And then it feels like I really ought to do that and that and that and that because I need to do that. And that's that would help me with that. And that would help me with that. And if I did this and if I did that. And the thing is, we don't need to do sometimes we don't need to do any of it. Sometimes we need to rest. And sometimes it's just the wrong time. And that might mean that you never go back to that book or that podcast or that course or that person or that place. Or, and, and maybe that's OK, because the time has gone and you were nourished in another way. So I like to think of it now as there are limitless ways to receive the nourishment I need and I don't actually need to do very much. So in the end, I narrowed down what I was doing and I committed to that. And then I even more than that, I slowed down the biggest course I'd invested in. I just slowed it right down. And it was recommended to do that within the course. But of course, my mind's going, oh, no, but not you, Heidi. Oh, no, you're going to finish it on time. (laughs) And I thought it wasn't competitive. I think I don't know what that is. I don't know if it's competitiveness or a bit of anxiety that if I don't do it within the time frame, I'll never do it, which firstly, isn't true if it's nourishing me because my commitment is to nourishing myself and secondly it wouldn't necessarily matter because the course I was doing was so good that it kind of overflowed with nourishment (laughs) and I just needed more time to to take it all in to integrate it and then the last um module I watched suggested that you did that module twice more and I was like oh right (laughs) this is this needs to slow down even more so yes my year has started with really upping my commitment to myself, deep, deep listening to the body, noticing my mind wanting me to not listen to my body and my heart. And then eventually and gradually and in dribs and drabs, it's not one sudden, oh yes, now I'm listening to my body in this perfect professional way. No, there was going in and out of that, in and out of that. And in the end, I just took a lot of rest. Oh man, feels a bit like some sort of, is it Alice in Wonderland going down the rabbit hole or some cartoon where you sink into the grass and you go down into the earth. It almost felt like I was being planted like a seed and just resting. And and then what happened is last week I started to notice this bubble of energy and excitement and slight irritation. It's like fidgetiness, this, this and by irritation, I mean this like, oh, come on, I don't want to rest anymore. And that's a good thing. That's that's not a, uh, I'm not going to rest because I'm listening to my mind. That was my body wanting to go, I want to move more. And and 
yeah, it was great. And I noticed this tiny stirring of excitement and energy, but that I still needed to rest. So it's been this gradual. And so I, and I also knew that in bulk was coming because I've been reading about it and was really curious about how I've been looking for a calendar of the year that, that supports me. And um as a Zen yoga teacher, you work with the seasons anyway in the in the Chinese medicine way. But I wanted, I don't know, there's just something else I wanted that that linked to what was going on around me when I when I go into my garden. I guess um, I live in the southwest of England, so that kind of uh, old old practices of connection to the earth and the and the seasons and the cycles is becoming increasingly important to me. So anyway, in bulk was coming. And that is the the first stirrings of spring. And that's what it felt like in my body and my heart, too. Very much so, like, oh, getting excited about the year now. Whereas before I was feeling really tired and heavy and like, oh, I've got lots to do to, you know, grow my business in a way that makes me happy, reach all the people I want to reach, have my impact on the world in the way I want to do things. And that was feeling heavy and now it doesn't. Now it just feels like, ooh, this is, I woke up really excited today. It's February. And and part of the reason, February is my launch month. It's one of my launch months. It's a big launch month. It's my first launch month of the year. I'm um, relaunching Get Your Life Back for the next live round. I'm really, really excited about that. I love that, you know, at this stage of Get Your Life Back, I'm really, really involved in it. So um, whoever joins gets gets a lot of time well not a lot not masses of time with me but a lot of um my input live there's a lot of live input it's, I'm, I'm very hands-on in it as it grows I guess that will have to change I don't know I'm still I can't imagine not doing group coaching calls I, I just love it but yeah anyway I'm really really excited so February is my launch month and my energy has returned for it exactly on time is that a miracle? Is that magical? I just find that fascinating that all of that heaviness and that need to rest. I went with it. Now I feel better. Woohoo! It's exciting. So I woke this morning really excited. So I just wanted to say to you, happy in bulk and how are things for you? So how was your January? Did you do my turn of the year pause to help you? I, I'd say I'm still in that. I'm still... Um, as I'm I'm about to set intentions for this month, I'm I'm gradually doing more and more dreaming in 2022, calling in what I really want, daring to say, actually, I really want that. Oh, but I have to share this with you. I'm so, so excited. So many unexpectedly, magically lovely things have been happening recently um, from very small and simple things like um, our chickens laid their first egg of the year and they haven't laid an egg for months, actually. Um, and this first egg just was such a surprise because it's still quite dark, isn't it? And it's still cold. Oh, so exciting. First egg, first little bantam egg. It's delicious. And then the first snowdrops. So magical snowdrops. They're just so magical. And then, and every year I've, I've moved them. So they are gradually appearing further and further down the garden, these little swathes. And then what else happened? Ah, this is what happened. Last night I had an email from Buzzsprout to host my podcast. I love Buzzsprout. They're so lovely. And it said that last week I had 10 times, more than 10 times, as many um, listeners as usual. That's amazing. That's amazing because I set as one of my intentions for this year to 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 create not create to attract to serve 10 times as many people through this podcast now obviously that's got to be consistent over the year but the fact that I put it out there in January and it's already started to happen is so incredible and so magical and I just had to share that with you and just say thank you thank you for being here thank you because you know who you are if you shared liked subscribed left a review did any of that because that's how the algorithms work and I don't know about you but I really want to see more things like this podcast more kindness more love more empowerment more helping people get their lives back from this constant 
you know, doom and gloom and, and lack of power over what, what we're absorbing everywhere. It's just, it's not good for us. We, we want to be happy. <laughs> we want to live our lives to the full. So thank you so, so much. And please, please, please keep sharing it. Keep helping me grow this podcast audience. And if you're new, it's so lovely to have you here. Thank you for being here. I hope that it resonates with you. And if it doesn't, that's okay. If it's not for you, that's okay. I'm sure what you're looking for is out there somewhere. But if this is for you, if what I'm saying resonates with you, then I'm so delighted that you're here. So that's how my kind of year has started. That's some of what's been going on with my turn of the year pause. Um, I'm going to share a bit more of my plans in a moment, but I just want to check in with you and ask you some questions. And you can either write these down, journal them out later or journal them out now, pause it, whatever's for you. Or I invite you to just let the questions wash over you so that you what I don't want you to do, because this is I get really tempted to do this. And it's quite difficult to make happen, isn't it? You say, oh, I'll pause this episode now and I'll do it later. And then it gets added to a to do list and it becomes another heavy thing to remember to do. So I'd rather you didn't do that just because I want to make this really easy for you. I'd rather that you just stayed with me now and just let these questions wash over you. And it you don't need to write down all the questions. If you want to journal them out later, you could just pick the one that you really like and just have that one. We don't need lots of questions. We need good questions. And some of them hit home at different times. So the first question is, how are you? And by that, I mean, how are you really? So we're very good at saying, yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, getting through. But that's not what I'm talking about. So I'm talking about how are you really? What does your life look like? Where are you in your life? So are you living in a way that really works for you? Do you have energy? Do you sleep well? Do you feel good? Is it easy for you to digest your food? Is it easy for you to have the energy for movement that your body needs? How grumpy and snappy are you with those you love? How easy is it for you to hear what they're saying? Or is your mind overwhelmed and full of your to-do list and lots of things nagging you and this invisible, constantly added to get better at list. How are you really? So whatever comes up for you is whatever comes up and it's just useful information. Now, if you find that you're getting a lot of negativity, if you're getting a lot of, oh man, this is really highlighting that I'm not where I want to be, then just notice that. And notice how much, if that's if bits of that are coming up for you, notice how much comes up from your mind about, yeah, I really ought to be better at exercising. I really ought to be better at listening to my partner. I ought to be a better parent. I ought to be a better dog owner. I ought, I ought, I should, I must. And then drop those because they're unhelpful. They're unkind. Because how is listening to those working out for you? That can really overwhelm us very fast. In fact, I would argue that one of the biggest sources of overwhelm is our own mind judging us. But let's bring some compassion into that. So those of you who've been with me a while know this, but I'm just going to run it through for all our lovely, lovely, lovely new listeners. So the human mind, you may or may not know this, this is just the way I tell it. The human mind is very easily overwhelmed. It's designed that way or it's evolved that way. The whole point is it's evolved to keep you safe. So when you get all of those shoulds and oughts and musts and then you can't see the wood for the trees, you just everything's suddenly very heavy and foggy. That's come from the system that saved your life. So you can think of it this way. Those of us alive today have descended from ancestors who had really, really good fight or flight or freeze or fawn. It's four now, apparently, um, which which kind of works for me. But I don't let's not go there. Stay focused, Heidi. <laughs> Get so excited. Go off at tangents. We have descended from 
humans with really, really good warning signal, warning systems in our body. Because we're alive, right? We've survived. We're still here. So that means that for some of us, not everybody, because people are different and this is about you. So if you, like me, have a really, really good system of high alert, you're quite sensitive to maybe moods or other people's energies and feelings and you don't want to let anyone down and you have really high standards and you like to do things well or not at all. And you you get overwhelmed but don't always realise it because you're really, really good at getting stuff done. You're really good at not letting people down. You might think that you let pe- people down, but you don't really. You are there for people. You are the go-to person to get done. You actually do masses more than a lot of people, but you compare yourself to others and you think that they're coping better than you or they're more productive than you or they're nicer or they're more fun or they're more something. But actually, you're an incredible person. You just can't really see it because that's overwhelm. Because you're, if you have a mind that is easily um, triggered into high alert, oh, I need to get that done and that done and that done and that done. Then what happens is when that nervous system alert is you know, sent into high alert, which let's face it, over the last two years, We've been literally bombarded on purpose with messages designed to trigger fear and anxiety. You know, it's not really surprising, is it, that in the end, we're just really overwhelmed. And I mean that chronic overwhelm, that stuck overwhelm, that foggy, heavy, oh my God, I cannot think straight. So I'm just going to keep doing stuff in order to find that clarity. I want clarity. I want to be able to think straight. So I'm just going to keep doing things and keep doing things and keep doing things and keep doing things to be really, really tired, but you can't sleep. So that really, really good at being triggered system, that's your mind keeping you safe. It's just not very helpful for happiness. (laughs) It's rubbish for happiness. So that's what we want to deal with. We want to realize what triggers us into overwhelm what causes us to lose the clarity where we can think straight and make decisions that are good for us that nourish us that that allow us to live in a way that well is nice (laughs) is happy isn't push 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 beat ourselves up all the time so this is a learning this is a with compassion and love. So your mind is incredible, but the human mind is easily overwhelmed in order to keep you safe. Some people seem to be able to go through life and brush stuff off. Others of us seem to collect heaviness (laughs) and getting stuck in overwhelm. And if that's you, you're in the right place because it's me and it's my clients and it's my students in Get Your Life Back. And it's the rest of my listeners and and people and I really like really really like you guys myself and how we are it's just that we need to learn how to be in the world without squishing ourselves into a shape that is impossible for us to maintain and causes us this constant overwhelm exhaustion uh, blocking blocking of happiness and ease. So back to the question, how are you on a really, really deep level? But keep it light. Let's keep it playful. Let's keep it curious. So if this is resonating with you, what to do about it? Well, the first thing I can say is it's time to introduce you to neutral noticing if you haven't yet embedded it in your life. And if you have um, got hold of any of my neutral noticing practices, the one minute mark is the easiest one to get hold of. Just go to my website or look at the show notes under here, heidimark.co.uk, the one minute mark. That's my free one minute audio um, so that you can practice neutral noticing. Now, neutral noticing is the practice of noticing completely neutrally what's going on for you. And it's life changing because what happened when I asked you that question? How are you? 
did you notice completely neutrally what came up for you? Or did you or your mind, as normal, because this is what our minds do, weigh in with doom and judgment? Or if you came up with things that you were really proud of, that you've made changes about, did you then get a layer of, oh, but, but you know, you've still got some ways to go? Because <laughs> that's what I get now. It, it feels sometimes it can feel like, um, I don't know that I'm never good enough for my mind. It's 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 just very demanding. It doesn't matter how much I, you know, carve out this path for myself where I'm really listening to my body and my heart and controlling my attention. My mind will still weigh in with, yeah, but you could do so much better, Heidi. Yeah, yeah, thanks, mind. I love you too. So, what came up for you? So, it's, so there's two things going on. There. There's the how are you? And then you can go as deep as you want with that. And, and everything you find, and I suggest that you go, well, I strongly recommend, the only way I would do it is to go in curiously. So you can you can do it with your body. You can do it with, you can notice what's going on in your mind. You can notice how your heart feels. Um, but, but, how, but whatever depth you're going to, you're going to want compassion for yourself and your human mind. You're going to want um, compassion for your body rather than judgment. You're going to want curiosity, particularly over the heart, because I think it's very easy for us to get blocked. I think one of the hardest questions I know is, what do you want? And that's a, that's a heart-led question, isn't it? What do, yeah, but what do you really want? Because that's not what you really want. That, that's great, but, you know, because most of us, if you keep following that down and you follow the fear about asking that question, what you get to is actually I just want to be myself and I want that to be OK. I want to feel good enough. That's it. I want to be loved. I want to be appreciated. I want to feel safe. It's very, very basic, but very, very deep stuff. And actually, that can only come from ourselves, really. It can't. Re I mean, yes, it comes from those who love us. But in the end. The ability to feel somebody else's love, the ability to feel the security that's already around us comes from tapping into our own feeling of love for ourselves, our own feeling of knowing that actually we are safe. We are loved. Everything's OK. You are perfect. And a work in progress. And I believe that the work is to let go of all the lies and the junk about how you're not perfect. And then, as I say that, notice what comes up for you. And then get curious about what comes up for you, if you'd like to. And then notice it completely neutrally. So if we treat everything that comes up to these kind of questions just as useful information, we don't have to do anything with it because it's the... The reason we don't want to address these kind of questions often is, or not go very deep with them, kind of brush over them, is because it can add to our to-do list and to our invisible get better at list. And that's already overwhelmed. That's already like more than you can achieve in a lifetime. So why would you want any more stuff added to that? Of course you wouldn't. So you're just protecting yourself. So instead, if we go in neutrally and curiously and we just say, OK, that's useful to know. Thanks. That's it. Don't do anything with it. Don't add to some crazy exercise routine unless you want to, unless that makes you feel great. So this is about choosing happiness. This is about dropping the judgment. It's about lots of things. But anyway, back to what I'm up to, just so because I know people like to know how I am. So I'm just going to quickly let you know what's going on with me. So yes, January, deep, deep rest. 1st of February, woohoo, energy coming back. I've got lots of lovely plans for this year. They're not, they're not really written out. It's still very messy. So I'm still in the turn of the year pause, episode four, dreaming in. But some of the dreams are building this podcast. I put that out there. It's already happened. So I've just got to ask to keep keep that going because I love it so much. Um, 
I have Get Your Life Back launch coming up. I'm going to be doing a masterclass before that so you can get to work with me and know what it's like to work with me and um, know if you resonate with how I teach. And also because um, not everybody wants or needs to join Get Your Life Back for a whole year. Um, some people just want to do one class, you know, just spend a short amount of time with me and get something achievable within that time something important so I'm working on that um, this week as I dream everything in um what else oh yes I've so I, some of you know that I did write the first draft of my book but that seems to have been a year and a half ago um, and then other oh, other things so much to do building a business so exciting so this year I've committed um, time in my calendar um, with an accountability partner to write my book. So that's super. I'm really excited about that. I cannot tell you how excited I am. Really, really excited. Um, and then, oh, loads of other things coming up for you guys um, within my business. But that's what's coming up. Get Your Life Back is my big, big focus for um, spring. So that's that's what I'm up to at the moment. And then Outside of my business on a personal level, I've been enjoying um, learning more about Qigong again because I really like Qigong. It seems to suit me. And also Zen yoga is very linked to Qigong. So that it just all it all moves together. And I found that really nourishing. Um, what books am I reading? I just read The Chronicles of Robin Hood because I love Robin Hood. I've always loved Robin Hood. But actually, the book was very violent. I don't want to read about violence so I'm not reading the rest um then I've been reading books about trespass and the fact that most of the land in England we're not allowed on which is really fascinating us but that's what got me into Robin Hood isn't it you can see what's going on here and because I love woodland I get really upset when I can't walk in a woodland so that's always yeah an interesting and emotional thing when I feel very connected to the ground to the earth to trees and yeah, that's going on, which has actually led me to walking more and just being really grateful for access to woods that I do have and just really enjoying that. Paying even closer attention than normal to the change in seasons has been really, really important to me. Um, I've also been really enjoying my relationship with wood. So <laughs> one of my favourite places to be is my woodshed. I don't know how you feel about wood but I love wood I feel very deeply connected to trees and the whole processing of wood our house runs off wood and I don't know I just love I love 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 my connection to that and organizing my wood shed and yeah it's, that's a big thing for me that's something that I'm really I don't know it's, it's very very important to me it seems very small to say it out loud but actually these things are important, aren't they? Saying this is important to me. It's such a simple thing. I've actually discovered that a lot of the things that are important to me are incredibly simple. Um, and I guess that's what happens when the more time we spend out of overwhelm, the more we get to know ourselves, the more we find actually what it is that nourishes us, what's really, really important. And then I wanted to share with you, lastly, I want to share with you um, part of my journey since 2019 when I had written on my kitchen wall because in those days the kitchen didn't have a proper wall so I could write all over it and I had during a really difficult part of my life written on the wall the deeper in your heart you live the clearer your path becomes and I just kept reading it and I kept reading it and I kept reading it and I just kept it there and it's still on the pinboard in front of me where I'm recording this because actually it still resonates whereas usually I'll let go of a year's um, kind of phrase but it's morphed into a phrase that came to me over the last few days which I really want to share with you because I don't know this really hits me deep and it it might it might resonate with you so this is it this is my phrase for the moment probably the year I get to be myself and have my dreams come true. I get to be myself and have my dreams come true. Notice how that feels for you. And then notice it completely neutrally. And then I wish you the most blessed.
splendid week full of unexpectedly lovely moments. Thanks for being here. Happy in bulk. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of the Overwhelm is Optional podcast. If it sounds like your kind of thing, then I invite you to go on over to heidimark.co.uk forward slash the one minute mark and get hold of my free audio so that you can get started on your journey out of overwhelm to creating a life that works for you instead of just working really damn hard trying to find a way to squish yourself in a life that isn't really working for you. So that's Heidi Mark, Heidi Mark with an E on the end, .co.uk forward slash the one minute mark. Thank you for listening. And Anytime you feel like subscribing, sharing, liking, commenting, it's so, so helpful. It finds other people find this podcast. Thank you so much for being here.